Verse number 1, Philippians chapter 4, Therefore my, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech Eodius and beseech Syntyche, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I treat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We'll focus on verse 6 this evening. Be careful for nothing. Father, add your blessing to the reading of our scripture tonight. And Lord, I pray that you'll open our understanding as we study your word together here this evening. That, Lord, you'll help us to grasp the truth that you have for us tonight. Spirit of God, do your work as only you can do. And take the truth home to each and every heart as you see fit. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen. Be careful for nothing. You know, it's interesting. Paul starts the chapter here, if you notice, by telling them to stand fast in the Lord. Stand fast in the Lord. And then he reminds them to be of the same mind in the Lord. These two ladies, Eodius and Syntyche, uh, I remember years ago reading this by Dr. Harry Ironside. He called them odious and soon touchy. And uh, maybe he said these two women who are odious and soon touchy, they ought to be of the same mind in the Lord. And I always want to read it that way when I read it, but I, I don't do that. And so we want to be stand fast, be of the same mind, and then of course verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. So there to be rejoicing in the Lord always, there to be of the same mind in the Lord, there to stand fast in the Lord, but something keeps them from doing that. What is holding them back? What is, what is keeping them from standing fast, from being of the same mind, and from rejoicing in the Lord always? You know what it is? Worry. Care. Anxiety. That's why he has to come to verse number 6 and say, Be careful for nothing. Careful. Full of care. That's literally what the word is talking about. So, there's the problem. Number one is the problem. What's the problem? Care. Worry. It's care. I've got too many cares. The obstacle to standing fast in the Lord is worry. It's being full of care. It literally comes from a word that means to pull in two different directions. It means literally to strangle. You ever felt that way? If you had things get pressing in on you and you feel like you're or you feel like you're being pulled in two different directions? <laughs> or things start closing in you and you feel like you're getting choked? Charles Mayo of the famous Mayo Clinic said, Worry affects the circulation of the heart, the glands, and the nervous system. It profoundly affects the health of a person. Worry. In fact, worry is bad for every system in your body. It increases the risk of heart attacks and strokes. It impairs digestion. It causes shortness of breath. It causes all kinds of aches and pains. And it produces headaches and migraines. Worry. Care. Concern. Whatever you want to call it. Charles Wesley said this, I would no more fret or worry than curse or swear. You see... It's not what you eat that kills you. It's what's eating you that will kill you. Worry, fretting, being full of care is a sin. Oh, I know. Uh, there's many people who wouldn't... Have, we, we, we get the list out, you know, of what sins are. Well, I don't drink and I don't smoke and I don't chew and I get all my list of sins out. But usually, you know the sin that doesn't make the list? Worry. 
Oh, and we know that's wrong. We know that's a sin. And so people say, well, I don't worry. I'm just, I just get concerned. <laughs> well, you dress it up and call it anything else you want, but it's still worry. And God says that being full of care, being anxious, or being worrying about things is a sin. I mean, it's a sin like lying's a sin. It's a sin like stealing's a sin. It's a sin like murder's a sin. It's a sin like cursing is a sin. It's a sin like drinking alcohol is a sin. Someone said being full of care does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow, but it will empty today of its strength. Being full of care does not make you escape evil, but it will make you unable to resist it when it comes. You'll never be an effective Christian and a worrier at the same time. You'll never be an effective Christian and a worrier at the same time. Won't happen. Be careful for, what's the word? Nothing. Well, no, 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 just the big things. No, nothing. Well, no, 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 just some things. No, nothing. No thing. Nothing at all. Well, no, preacher, I'm just careful about things that are heavy on my heart. No, nothing. Nothing at all. Be careful about nothing. Remember, remember who's writing these words. God has a guy write these words who's in prison, chained to a guard, uncertain about his future, but knowing it's probably going to be death. And he's the one writing. He says, you tell them to don't worry about anything. Wow. Pretty pretty profound. So that's the problem. Being full of care and worrying. But you know the Bible's great because it doesn't just tell us the problem. It also gives us a solution. What's the solution to the worry and the being full of care? He says be careful for nothing but in everything. So we're careful for no thing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. So the solution is prayer. Pray about everything. We, we worry or we're full of care about what? Nothing. We're praying about everything. The songwriter said, Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Why? All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. We're to pray about everything. Prayer must replace care. Prayer must replace care. We worry about nothing because we're praying about everything. When you're confronted with some unexpected situation or unexpected problem, when you have some unforeseen thing come into your life, is your first response to pray? Is your first response to take it to God in prayer? Or is your first response to text somebody? Or call somebody? Talk to somebody? Or would it be to go to God? 1 Peter 5, verse 7. Casting all your care upon Him. Why? He cares for you. He takes care of you. And so He says, I invite you to cast all your care upon Me. And so you have to come to ask yourself, listen, when I have those things in my life come upon me that I didn't expect, that I didn't see coming, that, that kind of uh, hit me blindsided and, and they've come upon me, they're in my life and I'm not sure what to do. What am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to cast those upon God. I'm supposed to pray. I don't have to carry those that load. It, he's, he's, he's carrying me. It won't make any difference to Him whether He carries the load or not, but it makes all the difference to me. So... Is He God or not? Can He supply for your needs or not? Does He take care of His own or not? 
Is he able or is he not? Problems, finances, relationships, circumstances, employment, stubborn habits, physical ailments. What are you supposed to do with these? Take them to the Lord. Cast all your care upon Him. The songwriter said, leave it there, leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Don't take it back with you. Leave it with the Lord. Now notice what he said. He said that we are going to be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let our requests be known unto God. So here, I'm supposed to do my prayer with thanksgiving. In Colossians 4 and verse 2, the Bible says this, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Say, no, wait a minute. Preacher, thanksgiving still still six weeks away. No, 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 no. The word about thanksgiving when we pray. Now, we've covered this before. Prayer is where we're asking. Prayer is where we're, we're giving our burdens, we're giving the problem, we're giving the care, we're giving it to God. Because He's promised to care for us. So we don't ever have to be full of care. God's people do not ever have to be full of care. That is a sin. We give it to God. But when we give it to God, we're to have thanksgiving. What, why thanksgiving? Well, first of all, I think we have thanksgiving because I'm thankful that I can pray. Because you know what that does? That gets God involved. I, I should say, it makes me aware that God's involved. Because God's involved. Amen? But I want to be aware that He's involved. So, I cast all my care upon Him, for He cares for me. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. Hey, I'm not just praying so I can say, well, I prayed and that helped me because I did some prayers or I read, I read a prayer book. That's not what prayer's about. Prayer's about getting answers. Prayer's about talking to the one. Uh, the psalmist said, O oh, thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all the earth come. We have a God who hears our prayers. We have a God who listens to what we're asking for. And He's looking for us to call unto Him so He can answer us and show us great and mighty things that we know not. James says, you have not because you ask not. How thankful we ought to be we can pray. And, and we can get answers to prayer. You see, it gets God involved. The father was watching out his kitchen window as his Seven-year-old little girl was playing in the backyard in a sandbox they had. He watched her move several large rocks out of the sand area. But one big rock, he said, was giving the little girl a great deal of trouble. He watched her move the rock over to the edge of the sandbox and, and, and she, she, it looked like she'd be able to get it up over the edge, but she never could. It would just sit there and pretty soon it would kind of work its way back towards her and she'd push it back the other way. About that time, it, she was the last time she tried to push it, it kind of rolled back on her and it pinched a couple of her fingers underneath it. And about that time, he walked out to her. And with tears in her eyes, he, he asked her what the matter was. And she told him all about that heavy rock in the sandbox. It was giving her problems. And, if, and, and he asked the little girl, are you listening? He said, did you use all the strength you had? And she said, I did, Daddy, I did. And he said, no, you didn't. She goes, what do you mean? He said, you didn't ask me. How many times we get into situations in which a tough situation and we try to defeat it and it comes back on us. We try to get rid of it, it comes back on us and say, man, I've done everything I can do. No, you haven't. If you had not ask Him to take care of it. 
Ask God to move it. God can do anything. He is almighty. He is all powerful. Call unto me and I'll answer thee and show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. God's word tells us not to be anxious, not to be full of care, but come to him with everything. Remember, everything in prayer. There's nothing that's too minute. There's nothing too small. That we, we know God can do the big things, but you know what? God can do the little things. I want His strength, not just my strength. He sure can help get those rocks out of your sandbox. Okay? He's the only one that can. So I'm thankful that I can pray. It gets God involved. Number two, I'm, I'm thankful that God has asked me to pray. God has asked me to pray. Jesus taught men ought always to pray and not to faint. So I, I, I'm taught to pray. Why? Because God is merciful. Because God is powerful. Because God is omniscient. God is loving. God will deliver us. God will guide us. God will provide for us. God will strengthen us. God will encourage us. The psalmist got so overwhelmed with God's goodness and God's grace to him, he said, Blessed be the Lord God who daily loadeth us with benefits. And God, God loads me up every day with benefits. And he does you too. He does you too. Now, Notice it says, in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. When I saw that in, I, it reminded me of 1 Thessalonians 5, where it says, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Notice it said, in everything, not for everything. I, 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 I can't honestly... Thank God for everything, but I can thank God in everything. Because I remember that I am in Christ Jesus. I am in Christ, and I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. You know, back in the book of Daniel, chapter 6, when the decree was signed by the other presidents and different ones about the, the, not to pray, make any petition to any god except uh, uh, even the king for 30 days. Remember what it said in Daniel 6 and verse 10? It says, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as he did aforetime. Wait a minute. They just passed the law that you can't pray to anybody. What's Daniel doing? Praying in what? Giving thanks that he can pray. Giving thanks that, that even in that situation, I don't think he's giving thanks for the fact that they passed that law, but he's giving thanks in the situation. So give thanks that God has asked you to pray about everything. I'm glad that there aren't certain things that you bring to God and God says, I'm not concerned about that. Even, he's even concerned the very hairs of our head are numbered. Pretty easy job for some of them, huh, Jeff? Huh? Yeah. For some he's adding for others of us he's subtracting <laughs> but he's but he's concerned about the minute details and and i guess hair in your head it's not only here but it must be here too then huh some of you guys you'd lose it up here you grow it down here to make up for it maybe huh but the lord keeps track of that there's nothing a sparrow falls to the ground he says i noticed that he's concerned about those minute details so we take everything to God in prayer with thanksgiving. So I'm thankful that I can pray. Gets God involved. I'm thankful he's asked me to pray. I'm thankful that God is in control. God 
is in control. Over and over again, in the book of Daniel, you'll find a phrase that God was trying to teach Nebuchadnezzar. And it, it, it's something about uh, that thou know the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. And over and over again, you'll find that phrase. You're going to learn, Nebuchadnezzar, that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and he sets it up on the whomsoever he will. In other words, God's in control of this, not you. And God's in control of our life, not us. What makes us anxious so often and what makes us full of care so often is the fact that we don't have control over the situations we're facing. Whether it's a teenager's social life or a spouse's health or our own career or we get, we get the feeling it's out of control. We get the feeling stressed. We know things are getting out of our control. Kids grow up. Illness or sickness attacks without warnings. Companies downscale and lay off people. And we lose a job. Death comes suddenly. And people, people feel the anxiety and feel the stress. The world says, take a pill to handle this. That's what they say. What do God's people do? Do we conform to the world and say, yeah, give me something to drink? Give me a pill to take. I can't handle this either. I can't take any more of this. I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't sleep at night. I go to bed and I just lay there. Is that what believers are supposed to do? Wait a minute. The, the one who lives inside of us is called the Prince of Peace. Where's the peace? See, the, 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 the bottom line is when, we're, when, we, when we begin to get full of care, we're forgetting that God's in control. God knows what's going on. God is God. Don't forget that. Say, boy, that's pretty simple. It's profound. God is God. And he knows what's going on. Shall the one that's formed it tell the one who formed it what's going on? And where he's going wrong? And where he, where he, where he doesn't done something right? Who are we to, to say that? If you can't trust God, who are you going to trust? Who is there? So there's the problem. There's a solution. Now, what's the result? Philippians chapter 4 again. What's the result? Philippians 4 verse 7. So when we're careful for nothing, but we take everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, we make our requests be known unto God, what does God send our way? And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Do I have... Am I full of care? Am I full of worry? Am I full of anxiousness? Or am I full of the peace of God? When you replace care with prayer, you receive God's peace. And it passes all understanding. It's beyond our comprehension. You, can't, you, you just can't understand it. Isaiah 26 and verse number 3. Look there with me, will you? Isaiah 26 and verse number 3. Great verse. You ought to have it marked in your Bible. Notice what the writer writes here. Isaiah says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because 
he trusteth in thee. You get, you get the perfect peace of God because your mind is stayed. It's fixed on God. Why is your mind fixed on God? Because you're trusting in Him. You have your weight on Him. You're depending on Him. You depend on Him. You're, you're, you're keeping your mind on Him. That's what you're depending on. And then God gives you peace. What's peace? Peace is to be safe from harm in spirit, mind, and body. Safe from harm in spirit, mind, and body. Notice back in Philippians 4 and verse 7. When God says He gives us that peace, that safety from harm in our spirit, in our soul, in our body, it passes all understanding. It's beyond our comprehension. And it keeps our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. When it says it keeps us, it's, it's literally a word that means it's, it guards it. What is it, what is it guarding our heart and our mind? It is like putting up soldiers around our mind and our heart. Why does it need to be guarded? So we don't allow the worry to come back in. We don't allow the care to come back in. We don't allow that concern to come back in. We don't allow the anxiety to come back in. It will not allow it in. You will stay in perfect peace. Because you've taken it to the Lord in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. We lose that when we do not take it to God in prayer. Peace, are you listening? Peace is not the absence of trouble. Peace is the presence of God. It's being aware of the presence of the Lord in your life. That's peace. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I, I, I read something uh, when I was preparing for this and I, it just came to my mind right now. I, didn't, I don't have it written down. But I was, it was a couple. I believe they're on a boat. And they're running into some very severe weather. And the, the, the wife was getting very, very anxious. Very, very concerned. And she began to grab her husband's arm and he could tell by the digging of her fingernails she was pretty frightened. And, and he, he asked her if she was afraid and she goes, yes, I'm very worried. I'm worried about the storm, worried about the weather. And he'd been a captain of the boat for many, many years. He knew how to handle the things in the storm and he pushed her away. Brother Morlin. And he pulled out a pretty good sized knife and he held it up towards her. He said, Are you afraid? Are you afraid of me? And she says, I'm not afraid of you. I know you love me. I know you care about me. You wouldn't let anything, you, you wouldn't use that on me. He said, You're exactly right. He said, Now who controls the storm? Who controls our boat? Who controls our circumstances? God does. And He is not going to harm us. He is going to take care of us. He loves us. Wow. She got the message. You see, it's not the absence of trouble. It's the presence of God. Jesus was in the boat when the storm was coming and the disciples, they're, they're, they're trying to fight for their life in the boat and the water's coming into the boat. Where was Jesus? Sleeping. Yeah, he was sleeping. He didn't worry, he didn't worry about anything. They had to wake him up. Peace. Jesus knew I didn't come to die in a boating accident. I didn't come to die in a storm on a boat in the Sea of Galilee. I'm really not worried about this. And so he had complete peace. And of course, once they, once they were aware and they made Jesus aware, he calmed the storm. And they were amazed. 
They were amazed at what he did. Being full of care, being full of worry is not the answer to your problem. Prayer is. Being full of care or being full of worry is not the answer to your difficulty. Prayer is. Being full of care or being worried is not the answer to your grief. Prayer is. Being full of care or, be, or worry is not the answer to your trials. Prayer is. The peace of God to guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. You know, it's, it's H.G. Spafford who was the businessman in Chicago and a dedicated, dedicated Christian. He had some serious financial reversals as a result of the great Chicago fire. And during the time of readjustment, he lost his home. He decided he'd send his family away for a needed vacation and decided they would take a trip to England. He sent his wife and daughter, four daughters ahead on a French steamer. And in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, his loved ones, that, that steamer collided with another and sank in 12 minutes. 230 people lost their lives. The four daughters were drowned. Mrs. Spafford was rescued. She sent that famous cable back to Chicago. Two words on it. Saved alone. Mr. Spafford was almost overcome with grief. He lost most of his business, lost his property, lost his home, and now he's lost his four daughters. And his wife is on the other side of the world, across the ocean. They're separated from each other. Do you think, do you think he could have got bitter? Do you think he could have got upset and said, there's going to be so many lawsuits against this ocean liner? Somebody's going to pay for this. Instead, he put all his trust in God. He put all his faith in, in, in that God knows what he's doing. And the song we sing, 275 in our songbook, I often hear, When peace like a river attendeth my way. Think about that. When peace like a river attendeth my way. That sounds really nice, doesn't it? But the next line says, When sorrows like sea billows roll. You ever have waves of sorrow come over you? Just waves. Whatever my lot, Thou hast taught me to say, It is well. It is well with my soul. It's a, it's a great song. But how many of us would have written that song after we lost our four children? And lost our home? Had our business crumble? That's inexplicable, unexplainable, beyond comprehension, the peace that someone like that has in that situation. Us looking on the outside in, we, we, we don't understand it. How can somebody have peace like that and write a song like that that we're still singing now? Huh? The peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I, I got a feeling the reason we don't have a lot of peace is because we don't have much prayer. We'd rather worry and fret and get anxious and be concerned and be full of care than to pray and give it to God. And know you're in control. You're in control of my life. Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, 
It is well. It is well with my soul. That's the, the peace that passes all understanding. That keeps our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Be careful. Be full of care about nothing. No thing. No thing at all. Everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known unto God. The result will be the peace of God that passes all understanding. Let's stand together, shall we? Father, take the truth now this evening. Thank you, Lord, for this admonition that the Apostle Paul gave to the church at Philippi. Lord, we want to stand fast. We want to be of the same mind. We want to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We want to be that kind of a Christian. What keeps us so often is we're full of care. We're anxious. We're worrying about things. The cares of this life get hold of us. Lord, we want to take your solution. We want to pray about everything. We want to take everything to you in prayer. Thanking you, Lord, that you're willing to get involved in our life. Thanking that you that you've asked us to pray. Thanking you that you're in control of our lives. That nothing happens to us that you don't know about. Nothing surprises you. Lord, I'm thankful for the result of the peace of God that passes all understanding. That keeps our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We want that peace in our heart, that, that freedom from harm in our spirit, soul, and body. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I'm going to finish praying in just a minute. won't have an invitation or anything this evening, but I would like to know if well, maybe the Lord has spoken to your heart tonight. Maybe that be careful for nothing was just what you needed to hear tonight. Got some things you're dealing with and you've been anxious about it or you're just kind of They've been occupying your mind and you found the, the solution tonight and what you need to do. Cast all your care upon him for he cares for you. Let Jesus take that care. Let God take those burdens. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. And he'll replace that with peace. That calm, that, 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 that wonderful calmness and serenity there's no harm going to come to you wonder how many folks tonight would say preacher the spirit of god has spoken to my heart tonight i want to be careful for nothing pray for me this evening will you slip your hand up say pray for me pastor yes amen wonderful you may put them down father thank you for speaking to our hearts tonight Lord, many many hands lifted Probably if we're honest, all of us could say we battle this. We go through the things of life and, and, and it it's just seems like our old nature just wants to worry about everything. And Lord, I pray that we would yield to this command to pray about everything. That we would take everything to you in prayer and leave it with you. And thank you, Lord, that you give us the peace that passes all understanding. And as we go through this world, may people see the peace that we have. And may they desire to know more about how we got that peace. And may we be able to share with them that it's, it's a person. It's Jesus Christ. He's the Prince of Peace. We love you this evening. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for your word tonight. Dismiss us with your care, Lord. And Make us mindful you go with us from this place. And I pray others will see Christ in our lives this week. And I pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing, The windows of heaven are open, the blessings are fallen tonight. 128 in the book if you need it. Let's sing it together. The windows of heaven are open, the blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart Since Jesus made everything right I gave him my old tattered garments 
He gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven. And that's why I'm happy. That's why you're happy. That's why we're happy tonight. God bless you. You're dismissed. Choir, come right on up.